Hello pre-calculus students and seekers of general truths. In this set of videos here, we are going to study how sinusoidal waves and uh, in general trigonometric functions apply to uh, real world situations. So we're going to start here with a problem on blood pressure. A person's blood pressure flows follows a sine wave corresponding to the beats of the heart. Suppose an individual's blood pressure at time t measure in minutes is p of t equals this function 20 times sine 160 pi t plus 100. What is the person's heart rate and what is his high and low blood pressure? And you know, a very tempting approach to this problem is, oh, why don't we just graph it? And graphing is certainly good, but you'll find that just trying to graph this, you're going to spend a lot of time messing around with your calculator, even Desmos, even GeoGebra. Those tools are inadequate unless you know how to set it up so that you could make use of it. Otherwise, you're just going to spend a lot of time guessing and checking on uh, what what your window is supposed to be. So let's try to understand this function a little bit here. This is a sinusoid function or a sine function. And for reference, I'm just going to draw the original sine graph right here so that we can see. Remember that the original sine graph goes from negative one to positive one for the min and max. And its full period is two pi. Okay. Now this function here has has a 20 in front. So that means that the the waves here is going to get stretched out, right? And it's going to have an amplitude of 20. So if we take the sine graph and we draw the exact same thing again, right, it's going to look something basically the same picture, except the scale is going to be different. You can have a, a max of 20, a min of negative 20. And then if you look at the vertical shift, everything gets pushed up by 100 units, right? So now if we draw a slightly more improved picture of this. The maximum point here is actually going to occur at 120. Right? And the minimum point is going to be negative 20 plus 100. So it's going to occur right around 80. So that's 120. This is 60. So let's say this is about 80 right here. And then the middle of the wave is going to occur right at 100. So the wave is going to, this person's blood pressure is going to look something like this, up and down, up and down, up and down. Okay, so the, uh, the, the blood pressure of a person depends on how the heart beats. Well, when the heart contracts, the blood pressure spikes. When it relaxes, the, the blood pressure drops. And keep in mind here, this is along the t-axis, and this is measured in minutes. Okay. So, and all we're doing is just kind of exploring this function a little bit before we actually try to answer some of the questions. And let's look at the horizontal movement here or the horizontal effects here. This part right here, 160 pi. Okay, this of course changes the period. Remember that the period of any sinusoid is equal to the period of the parent function, 2 pi, divided by b, which is the, the constant in the front here. So you get 2 pi divided by 160 pi. So this is going to come out to be 180, 180th, which means that our, our sinusoid here for this person's heart is going to start here. It's going to go up, and it's going to go down, and it's going to go back to the, the beginning again here. And all that's going to take is 180th of a minute. Okay, 180th of a minute. So that's a, you know, that's a little, that's somewhere between one and two seconds, right? So 160th of a minute is a second, and this we're talking about 180th of a minute. So let's, let's think here, what is the person's heart rate, or in how many beats per minute? Well, if we look at the sinusoid here, one period here really does correspond to one beat. So we're going to say that this, this, this person's heart takes one beat every 180th of a minute. Okay. And the question is, well, how many beats per minute 
uh, will this will the will this person's heart be be pumping? And you can see here we actually have the right units already. We just have to convert it. So we have one beat per one eightieth of a minute. If you do work out this math, it turns out that it's just going to be eighty beats per minute. And that gives us our answer to the first question. Now, the second question, what is his systolic or the high blood pressure? And what is the diastolic? Well, we have it by using the graph here. Um, his high is at 120. And his low is at 80. Okay. So you see, from understanding uh, sinusoids, we can answer some of these questions uh, by by interpreting the values of this of this sinusoidal function, all right, and uh, and again, even if you try to use the best technological tools, it'll be quite difficult without understanding what your window is, and you might spend a lot of time fumbling with your technology before you do. All right, so we'll end this video here. We're going to move on to something that's a little bit different, um, and uh, and we'll go from there.